episode 10, we are joined by professional quarterback, NFL, XFL quarterback, Chad Kanoff. Chad, thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And those of you who don't know uh, Chad's background a little, so he was spent some time in the NFL for two years, the Cardinals, Lions, um, and then he was also in the XFL this past season. So that's, that's my first question that I want to talk about um, with you is, you know, what was it like to be a part of the XFL, obviously with it's making its um, comeback to come back as a league? Yeah, it was a great experience. Um, if you are in the NFL as a third quarterback, which I was on the practice squad and non, you don't get a lot of reps and you really only get to play in the preseason. So I was really looking forward to getting a lot of reps and getting to play, which I did get to do. Um, and I was like, that was really fun. So I hadn't played in two years since college. It was well run. It was just normal football. And I would say that the talent was really good. It was uh, a lot of good. There's a lot of good players that are just on the cusp of being in the NFL. Um, that kind of the bottom of the roster, I think, are somewhat interchangeable. And those guys were playing in the XFL. So it was a hungry league. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And what was it, what was it like being part of uh, history a little when, you know, you signed to the Guardians and then you, became, you were part of the first ever XFL trade? <laughs> I didn't actually know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah you but it was first. awesome. I'm from Los Angeles, so that was like a dream come true. I mean, I'd only right. been, I most of the XFL had started practicing in like November, and I hadn't because I was still on the Buccaneers. So then I signed over and practiced for like I think I had ten practices with the Guardians, <laughs> and then I got traded and I had like five with them and just go play. So it was it was like kind of like playing when you were younger, like you just kind of like go out there and play. It wasn't like a bunch of film study and diagramming you know <laughs> yep yep absolutely and then so what was that what was that first game like I know there was there was a moment where you lost some communication with your um, offense coordinator so what was that I know that must have been a little bit hectic with like you said only having 10 practices and then losing that communication in the game I know that must must have been tough yeah I probably could have handled it a little better I uh <laughs> yeah we had it go out in the <laughs> scrimmage too and he had me just calling plays and then this time, whatever, was a, I thought a pretty critical third down and where the receiver's headset went out and my headset was out. So he's running the wrong route. Mm. I got sacked because he didn't hear the call. And so that was really frustrating. And honestly, it was more it was more frustration at the XFL <laughs> than uh, – no, I mean, it's a startup league, so not everything's going right. to be perfect. But it just sucks because the whole thing is predicated on the, the headsets working because there's no huddle. Exactly. So if the headsets don't work, then, you like, you can't run plays, basically, because there's no way – like. If you don't know, I guess I could have known that the play clock's really short. So uh, the headsets go out. I mean, that's that's just a part of football. So I could have handled it a little better, probably. Right, right. Makes sense. No, I, I can't even. I'd I'd be pretty frustrated in that situation too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, are you excited for the new um, management in the XFL and just the future of the XFL? Oh, Chad, can you hear us? Oh, sorry. I thought I've been speaking. Oh, I no worries. muted myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I was just talking to Norm Chow the other day, and he was really excited. He thought that it was great. He talked to some of the higher-ups there, um, thought it was going to come back in full force. And I think Dwayne The Rock Johnson is, like, the perfect guy to own it because he was one of these players. I mean, he played in the CFL um, before his acting career and really fought. And then I think he's going to be willing to put in the time. It sounds like he seems like he has financial resources, which will be able to sustain it. And assuming there's not another pandemic, I think it'll, it'll be a great league. Just like it would have been. And then um, can you walk us through scoring the first touchdown for the Wildcats in the uh, franchise history? How was that? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I'm not, I, I think I only scored like one or two rushing touchdowns in three years of starting in college. So to run was definitely different. <laughs> I think it's something I've been really working on. I played with Kyler Murray for an, a season and a half, an uh, off season in uh, the NFL. And that I'm, I'm not even remotely on the same level of an athlete as him, but it does make you kind of think that you got to be able to move around. So I, it was something I really worked on uh, running and moving. And I was happy to be able to run one in. Right, Sweet. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> That's awesome. 
That's awesome. So what are, what are some things you've been doing um, lately just to kind of stay sharp, stay in shape? Yeah, I have a quarterback coach out here. Um, he was my high school quarterback coach and I work with him once a week. And then there's actually another receiver from the XFL, Nelson Spruce. And then I have two other guys that recently were released from NFL teams that all live in Los Angeles. I'm based in Los Angeles. So I try to throw a couple times a week. Um, I lift four times a week now. I was doing a different program through – I had like a bit of a, a shoulder problem after this league, so I got like a new therapist um, actually through Andrew Luck who had – he went over to Germany and Amsterdam to work with these guys that have a very kind of different way of doing things. And so I've been working with them over Zoom, and they gave me like a pretty comprehensive shoulder program and weightlifting program that I've been doing. I actually really like it. I think I'm, I'm somebody that's like sampled a ton of different training methods. Mm -hmm. I did an off season. I did one, I went down where Drew Brees worked out. I went to where Brady worked out and just, I think you kind of got to find what works for you. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what uh, works for me. And I'm really happy to have, to have found something that I feel good about changing. Right. So I've been doing that, whatever. Yeah. Four times a week. And then I lift, I always do, footwork with my coach and I try to throw however much I do some of the Tom house like shoulder exercises I don't know if you guys are familiar mm -hmm. with those I know he's kind of blowing up he's got an app coming out supposedly for baseball that's I think cool. it'll be pretty cool yeah but, yeah that's awesome yeah it's definitely it's definitely important just to kind of find what fits you and where you're comfortable with because that's when you're gonna make some good progress yeah no doubt so you kind of just talked about it a little bit, but do uh, any other like NFL players you've played with or past XFL players re reach out and train with you? Or are you training any like young athletes or helping any young um, athletes uh, want to go to the next level? I, I've i like volunteered coached in, for my quarterback coach who was a head coach. And I write, he's got like a weekly newsletter, monthly newsletter that I write a little blurb in. Um, I'll occasionally train with some of his guys, but no, I have, I haven't been personally coaching anybody. Um, and mostly, yeah, it's just kind of through the grapevine. There's not quarterbacks are always looking for receivers. Receivers are always looking for quarterbacks and LA seems to have a high proportion of, uh, receivers and there's some quarterbacks too, but I feel like there's always more receivers than quarterbacks. So I've just kind of found to kind of just through word of mouth. And honestly, LA has been, uh, most of the fields have been closed. So it's just kind of finding a place to go. And then there's normally like a bunch of people there. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Right. Um, so then, uh, then putting it back, going back to a couple of years ago. So what was, what was your pre, what was your pre-draft process like, uh, you know, coming out of Princeton and everything like that? Yeah. So I was, I was always wanted to play in the NFL. There's not a lot of Ivy League quarterbacks that do. So I was, apply I applied for jobs um, in the fall had a job in consulting and then that senior I graduated basically in the winter after the season mm -hmm. and I just went full-scale training I went out to a, a like academy place I got signed by an agent um and then they basically put you up in a hotel at a facility where you just train non-stop for six weeks lift like six days a week work with a quarterback coach three days a week like they do film study they like prep you basically for your pro day work with sports psychologists which I think that was like the most helpful thing of the whole thing because I'd never spent any time with them. And I would really highly recommend that or reading uh, Mind Gym by Gary Mack for anybody interested in it. Because I think it's such a mental – quarterback such a mental position. And like mm -hmm. you, basically anybody can go throw, right? But like are you going to be able to throw when people are watching you and there's a ton of pressure on you? And I think honing that is really, really important. Some people are – you have a ton of confidence naturally. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks I feel like are generally – really confident people I don't know that I'm like overly confident so I think that was really good for me to kind of just make sure you're thinking thinking the right thoughts like literally you can think wrong thoughts think right thoughts so that was really good and then whatever I had my pro day at Princeton with three of my friends uh, I had a good pro day I didn't get invited to the combine which was frustrating um, but you can't control uh, yeah, you obviously can't control that. So I was pumped that I got signed after the draft because a lot of guys that were at the combine didn't even get signed after the draft. Right. So, uh, yeah, and, and that, that training camp actually was – I had a ton of good luck because Sam Bradford was hurt 
Josh Rosen ended up getting hurt. So I got a ton of reps, which is a ton of fourth quarterbacks in training camps that are undrafted, basically just don't practice and are mm-hmm. just there as a camp arm and then get cut. And I got enough reps to prove myself and make the practice squad and then eventually the active roster that year. So that was good right. fortune, I would say. And then you right. get, yeah, you get you got to kind of take the good fortune with the bad fortune. And it's all about opportunities, and you just got to make sure you're ready for yours. I would say I hope that I can get another one, but if I don't, I'll be happy with what I had. Right. And now did you pick the Cardinals? Because um, I know a lot of guys will have a couple of teams uh, when they go undrafted that they – uh, you know, a couple teams I'll want them. Did you pick the Cardinals or? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I was talking with the Chargers. Uh, and Patriots. I don't even, it was, I, I, I kind of committed to them pretty early mm. in the sixth round. They called me and were like, Hey, if you're going to go with the team, if you don't get drafted, we come to us. I had a really good relationship with their quarterback coach, Byron Lefwich, yep. who I really think really highly of. And I thought it was a good situation, even though they drafted a, a quarterback. Because if you're, if you're coming in as undrafted, you're more or less eventually going to be competing to be a backup. And they had an older quarterback room. And I kind of saw – I think if, if the coaching staff had stayed, I could have um, eventually become a backup there uh, if everything had stayed the same. So I think it was a good decision, honestly. It was a good, it was a good place for me to land. But, yeah, I don't actually know that I had firm offers from anybody else. But I did commit – somewhat early to them because it is it's a bit like recruiting like it's a game of musical chairs at the end of the draft uh i wasn't like the most sought after guy some guys get fifty thousand dollars signing bonus because i was not one of those people <laughs> but you only need one luckily that's interesting i didn't know that's how that worked with uh undrafted players but um how is it being around kyler murray and uh brett hunley uh, it was great. I learned a lot from both of them. Um, Brett is a great A human being, uh, and he's been around a lot of really good players with uh, Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. And he was from Arizona, which is cool. Uh, know all the local players. Was great, too. I mean, he's like, I think he's just athletically to just kind of walk out on a practice field and throw really, really accurate. Oh, we're, uh, we're losing a little, Chad. Move really, really quick. So I don't know. Most guys that are that fast. Oh, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, we got you, we got you now, yeah. You're breaking up a little. Sorry about that. No worries. Sorry about that. Uh, I just said, I think I cut off with – He's he Kyler was one of the most impressive people I've seen athletically. Most guys that are that fast cannot throw that well. Most people that can throw that well are not that fast. I mean, he's like as accurate as they come and as quick, quick as a cat. It's pretty ridiculous. So it's not surprising that he's having a lot of success. Yeah, and is there anything kind of being around being around Kyler Murray that you've noticed has has been different from any other quarterback or any other player that? just makes him as, you know, as, as elite that he is. Is there any other factors that, um, you know, that you think of? His is a little bit – his he, wor- he obviously works hard and has worked hard his whole life and uh, loves the games. Had, his dad is a, was a coach. So I think, I think, if anything, it's like getting on it early. Like his dad was a quarterback coach, and I think he's, he's always trained well and had – been on good teams and played well, but his is somewhat unique. Like he's pretty uniquely talented. Like most people, you'd think most people have really worked really hard. Like James Winston is one of the hardest workers you'll ever see, and like pounds, but he's still like a very. He's an. Uh, Kyler is like genetically really, really impressive, despite. <laughs> not having the like standard stereotypical height of a quarter matter when you can move and throw like that. And how you get accurate is a really difficult thing to do. Um, but he has good mechanics. So whatever you have good mechanics. Oh, we're uh, losing you again. Said his dad. Perhaps work with your young. Hello? 
Yep. You got me? Got you now. Sorry yep. about that. No worries. So sorry. I was saying he, when he was young, his, his dad was his coach. And I would say <laughs> he, he said he learned from his dad. Uh, so have a dad that played NFL quarterback <laughs> <laughs> or get a good quarterback coach when you're really young. You can start young. Think how to throw a ball. There is a right way and a wrong way. He's got very good mechanics. Oh, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm okay. here. I'm just up. Yep. Okay. So sorry, I was, um, that was the end of my <laughs> statement. No, yeah, because it was just it was just like lagging in and out. No worries. But um, so now going back to you know, when you're a high school senior and junior. So what was your recruiting process like? And is there any advice that you would have for um, guys who are going through that right now? Yeah, so I had a pretty weird one because I uh, I was actually committed to Vanderbilt for like six months back when James Franklin was a the coach. They were my first offer. They offered me in the spring of my junior. I wouldn't say that I did it right at all. And I really understand my pressure kids feel and like I think getting offered a scholarship was like the greatest uh one of the happiest days in my life honestly uh, I really couldn't believe it, it was, um, I would say I, I don't I if, I if I did it again I don't know I don't know that I would do it totally differently it's just it's a tough, it's a really tough process because you have professional salesmen, right? There are whose jobs depend on getting you to go to the school you want to go to the school that they're coaching at. And you're kind of a 17 year old kid. I would say just kind of stay true to yourself, figure out where you think you're going to be happiest and you got to do with committing really late. And it was this year. I got to start for three years at Princeton playing the NFL. Um, but I would say, yeah, don't, don't discount anybody. Take everybody's call and just be happy with what you can get and try not to be feel too much pressure. I just remember getting so stressed. My parents, my parents were so stressed, like, Oh, what should you do? And just kind of any offer you get, be really excited about. And then, um, so I was looking at your stats in college and just to try to get some questions. And I was wondering what, what do you think was the biggest reason for your, big jump in play from your junior to senior year? Uh, a ton of things. I got asked this actually in the pre-draft like process by a bunch of people because I, I don't think I was on people's radars. And I, I, don't, I definitely improved as a player. I think I, I made a real point to get better every year. And that spring, I got to take the spring off from school because going into the fifth year, that's just how the Ivy League works. You have to take a semester off. So I got a lot more time to train, which definitely helped. But if you're a quarterback, right, you're a function of the system you're in somewhat. Your stats are a function of the system you're in. So I think the year before I played actually really well, I just didn't have great stats. I split time with another quarterback who's now a fullback in the NFL um, with the Green Bay Packers. And that can cut into your stats for one, but it, it didn't really matter. Um, so I would say partly that and he got hurt the next he was hurt the next year. So then he wasn't there. So then I took basically every snap. So just numbers wise, I was going to have more. I think we were honestly a worse team too. Uh, we were behind a lot. So we threw the ball a ton. And my coach, the coach, the, my coach before was a head coach. He's not a head coach at Brown. And now my offensive coordinator was offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State and at Rutgers. And maybe we threw it a little bit more than we had in the years past. And then we also, it was kind of a perfect storm of things because we also had two guys that are now tight ends in the NFL, um, which I don't think we had the years before. So when you, when quarterbacks have really good year, like Joe Burrow, for instance, right? He has this like statistically unbelievable year. He was a really good player the year before. Just nobody realized it because he didn't have the pieces around him. And then suddenly when he has Justin Jefferson, and Edwards Hilaire, uh, and all the other like great players, great coach, he's a really good player. It shines through. So I think you just kind of got to stay, uh, stay with the process for quarterbacks. I've had plenty of years where my stats are like horrible. And then you have years where your stats are really good and you're maybe playing marginally better, but sometimes the best play is a third down, whatever, throw the swing route, get two yards. Like that's, that's actually good football. And if you do that enough, keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Eventually you'll have a real breakthrough when you get in the right system. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, that's great advice. Sometimes you got to take the check downs and um, yeah, definitely. So we've had a couple other um, Ivy League guys on our podcast and um, they've talked about the balance between academics and athletics. So what was, what was that uh, like for you while being the starting quarterback and then obviously having to balance that with academics? Yeah, I think it's really hard. It's really challenging, which is good though. I mean, you want to be challenged. I think, I think a lot of guys that just go to school to just play football, you don't grow as much as a person and you don't, it doesn't benefit you later in your life to just play football through college. Right. I mean, that's not the purpose of college is most people are not going to get to play professional. And even if you do get to play professional, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to make uh, enough money to live mm-hmm. to not ever have to work. So <laughs> learning how to be a critical thinker is really important and learning how to balance time management is just life. So I think being disciplined, it takes a ton of discipline, it takes structure. You gotta be on time. You gotta be accountable. Um, balancing all those, but I'm not, it was not, it was definitely not easy. And I think just like I said, t- taking a year off from school did help me improve probably that last year. So I just got the focus on training and writing a thesis, but it was manageable. I mean, some people, a lot of guys on my team had worse grades in the spring when you didn't have football, mm. <laughs> tons of guys, <laughs> because they just kind of relaxed. Just, yeah. yeah it's kind of surprising, but you get, you get kind of getting the structure of football, right? Or you're regimented every week know how much work you have to do you do your work when you're in when you don't have structure it can sometimes everything kind of fall apart yeah exactly some sometimes guys uh like you said they get they get just too relaxed i've seen it a ton uh throughout college and as a coach um when they don't have football as that as that regimen they relax and kind of you know slack off in the classroom yeah no doubt so something I'm uh, curious about as a quarterback and as a coach. So what's, what's your favorite passing concept? Hmm. Like just first and 10 or like shot or like third down red zone. I don't think I could just like pick one. Yeah, no. Um, let's say, let's say it's uh third and 10, third and 10. You're on the 45 yard line. Okay. Oh God. There's not a lot of good calls there. Not a lot of stuff you love. <laughs> I would say I would say this route that they had with the Bucks called Congo that was a, a guy busting through the middle. So trip trips right out of trips. The number three can kind of take the middle or break to the uh like skinny seam if it's too mm-hmm. high the number two does like uh he does an out versus cover one and cover four but he hooks it up versus anything else and then yep. the third guy on the outside has a dig and then on the back side you can either tag like a turn or a post curl or come back uh i just think it gives you a lot of options for there's not a lot of good calls there and right I love when the receivers have to read the coverage and make a decision based on what it is. I, I love stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. somewhat complex. It takes time. It takes like getting to know guys. It takes feel. So I think those end up being the best. Obviously, you can't just like run run out there and run that play. You got to practice it a ton of times. But I think it's actually got a, it's got answers. The Bucks are good about having most plays. The Arian system most plays have answers. There's one, two, three, four, two man. Right. Just good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know what you mean. I love I love having those having those plays where the receivers have options. They gotta be on the same page as the quarterbacks. That's why I love the love the guys who have the good football IQ and can go find those open spots. Yeah. So do you have uh any pregame rituals or routines you do before when you're uh preparing for the games? Yeah. I more or less do the same things as I always did in high school. I come a couple hours before I get my script. Uh, I lay down in like a really dark room, <laughs> basically, so I can just like rest, close my eyes, and then I would look through the whole. I did this the night before too. Read every passing or every play that's in the game, and like think about where you would go versus different coverages. So if this guy's here, like you gotta like close your eyes and like think about where the guys are gonna be and then a defense over it. I think you kind of get better at doing that as you go. But I would do that then the day the day of the game, just kind of lay there. Oh, I wouldn't do it for every call, but definitely for the third downs and all the red zone. 
just visualize yourself going through it. Some guys like uh, Ryan Griffin, he would like he would hitch through every play on like Friday, like okay, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. And I would just personally like to just do it in my head, lay down, and think about it. I would do that, and then I would stretch while I was doing that. Nothing, nothing too crazy. It's basically like a meditation, and then go play. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have do you have a favorite drill? Um, I know like a lot of quarterbacks will have a certain drill that they really like that they've been doing for a while. Um, do you have a favorite drill that you like to do, whether it's in season or out of season? Um, yeah, I don't I don't actually love uh, quarterback drills because I I just I like doing stuff that's really uh, similar to what you do in the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm always trying to like so the drills that I like are the most similar stuff to do in a game. Like I like I think the wave drill is pretty similar. That's quick, so you drop quick couple movements throw um and i like i would record my drill i've been in high school supposedly it's a brady drill i don't know if that's true or not for my coach but you drop drop six five hitch up left hitch up right hitch up and then throw or like i've always liked where guys come at you and you spin out and throw or a guy come at you you have to hitch up and go under or you got to go around protect the ball like you can't work on uh ball security enough yeah, absolutely. I like that a lot. If you could go back and say one thing to yourself before college, what would you say? Any like advice to yourself or just, just anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say just enjoy, <laughs> enjoy it. You only get to be in college once. So make sure you're enjoying being a student, being a football player, getting to go to school and like being a college kid, I think it ends really fast. It's really just like a tiny period of your life. So really enjoying it, I think is important. Yeah, definitely. I just thought of a question too. I forgot to ask it earlier. So what was it like being around uh, Larry Fitzgerald? I know I saw that picture you have with him on your Instagram, you guys hugging. So what was that like just being around him? Obviously one of the best receivers of all time and, seems like a just a great guy to be around yeah he really is i uh he needed a guy, a guy to throw to him classically so i got i went to his house both off seasons uh before i really even knew him the first time so i'd only been there for like two months and he called me out of the blue like hey what are you doing what are you doing next week <laughs> like I'm not, just training i so i flew to his house in minnesota and uh, i got to spend a lot of time with him there so i think i got to know him a lot better then he's just he's a great human being a really good role model for young players in the NFL, like both as a football player, like getting your work done and off the field, like he's a really smart businessman. I think he would, people would be surprised to know how many different business deals he's in and all the people he knows. He's like a very intellectually curious guy. Um, and I think he's a, he's a great ambassador for the NFL too, obviously. Mm. I think the Cardinals really miss him. It's like, and as good as they come, I mean, catching the ball and to be able to transition your game as you, as he's gotten older and still, be an asset to an NFL team is really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, definitely one, definitely has been one of my favorite to watch throughout the years. That's for sure. Um, so what do you, so what are your plans um, after, after your, after football is all, all over for you? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm still figuring that one out, but uh, I could see myself going back to some sort of graduate school. I don't know what, um, mm. hopefully I can be one of the lucky ones that, just gets to play football for your whole life but yeah. if that doesn't happen then uh yeah i'm not entirely sure probably not going into coaching anymore but it's okay <laughs> yeah, i was just curious i like to ask guys that question but um and then yeah. also also just a kind of another fu- a fun type of question do you have any ho- any uh personal hobbies that that um you really like to do in your free time or anything like that yeah uh yeah I've tried to become a little better golfer. I've actually gotten really into surfing. Uh, I've done it some when I was younger, but I've had a lot more time. And I would say I really love I love doing that. It's been like a good thing to keep you uh, get, get in flow, you know, where you like feel like you're in a game. You can really get that surfing, actually, which is pretty crazy to me. And just like learning a new skill that's really challenging has, has been great. That's awesome. That's awesome. But uh, that's that's all we have. Uh, thanks again for thanks again for taking the time to to hop on. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, if there's anything else, if I can ever help you guys, let me know.